Uh, I'm making things again today. Um, I may have done this before, I don't remember. Lockdown's doing things to people's brains. But uh, I thought I'd share how I make these boss cap rivets that appear on a lot of belt buckles, drinking horns, buckets and things like that from uh, sort of the northern and western parts of Britain and also Ireland too. So here we go. Sheet of copper alloy plate, brass, bronze, whatever you want. Normally about half a millimetre thick, something like that. Got a little pritchel hole in this anvil here. Place the sheet over the top. I've got a punch with a domed end. This brass plate has been annealed, which means I've heated it up till it was, you know, quite red. Held it there for a few seconds and then quenched it in some water so it's softer. And I just hammer it and then I come at it from a few angles. formed a shallow dome, this one here. So the next thing I'll do is same again, just push it out. Look for any asymmetries in it, you can always punch it a bit harder or a bit more on that side. And then tap down again, and that'll do. Next stage, which normally I would polish this now, um, so you can cheat and use a modern machine which is far more sensible or you can try and use some ancient methods which involve faffing around with things that are hard to get hold of and take forever but I'll just punch this one and show you so I punch a little hole in the middle I'll do find a little hole, probably can't even see that to be fair I then tend to push, once I've punched a little hole in it I tend to push it in from this side just to curl the edges back and reinforce it Move the rough edges. Got some snips. These are obviously modern ones, but you could use uh, historic examples too. They work exactly the same. They just don't tend to have a spring on and take longer, but they work fine. Um, cut this out. You end up with lots of little jaggedy pieces of copper alloy left, which are something you find a, a lot on a sites from the past you find bits of metal like that with just jaggedy scissor cuts around it. One of my little favourite bits of sort of industrial debris because you can see people working away at stuff. I should wear goggles for this because they ping off in various directions but I'm an idiot so I don't or I'm not. And what you've done you've actually got a jaggedy boss left the edges are not very tidy I can't really show you because the phone won't focus very well but it'll be a right mess. This is the thing that took me years to work on because I used to try and clamp it or hold it or file it off. Best thing to do is to take your domed punch, punch into the stake you've got, punch a little dome, just slightly shallower than your boss. Place that in there, like so. Um, you can see I've got tons in here, so I might use one of the previous ones. I'll use that one. And then uh, that will basically hold... You can file across the surface of the block, then, and that will hold the little boss in place, because your downward pressure is just pushing it into the hole. And that files you a nice, smooth, flat... Bottom it. Again, you won't be able to see that, but that basically smooths the surface. You just keep going at that. Sometimes there's a few raggedy bits left, but all that's left is just to run a few round, and you've got a boss ready to use. Now if you go on and make another 27 or whatever the heck it is of those, you can have one single belt from Kniep. So, good luck with that. And if you wonder why uh, northern sort of inch bossed insular belts are expensive to buy versus cast ones, it's because there isn't a simpler way of doing this, so if they're made properly, they're always expensive and you can't really skip and cheat and cast or anything else. You just have to fabricate each one every time. I hope that was vaguely interesting. Uh, trust me, it's not when you've made about 500 million of them like I have. But at least making this video gave me something to do.